Welcome to the Mentors and Moguls podcast. I'm your host, Heather Stone. I bring you mentors and moguls from all around the world, different walks of life, from creatives to CEOs to business leaders to top athletes and all kinds of other people in between. If you like our episode today, all of our podcasts are available on our YouTube channel. Please go ahead and subscribe and comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. In today's episode, we're talking all about children's safe entertainment for your toddlers online. Brecky Breck has a children's education and entertainment channel on YouTube. It's called Brecky Breck with Breck Johnson. She's passionate about using fun and exciting experiences to encourage little ones to be imaginative, creative, and cultivate a love of learning. Welcome to another episode of the Mentors and Moguls podcast. Today, we've got a very fun guest. Yes, she's a special guest, but this one is uh, taking a little bit of turn. We're not talking to a serious CEO. We're not talking to an Olympic athlete. We're talking to someone from YouTube, Miss Breck Johnson, better known as Brecky Breck. Welcome, Breck. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to just you know, share my heart. So thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So some people might say, well, what in the world does she do if she's she's not a CEO uh, in the corporate world? The, the reason why I wanted you on is because we talk about pivoting, especially with the pandemic. A lot of people have uh, either found themselves without a job, they've quit their jobs, or they said, I'm not happy anymore. I want to do this over here. Mm -hmm. And you have done this over here. And so that's why I wanted to dive into this saying anything is possible if you've just got an imagination and you put up the work. Mm -hmm. um, so how did I find out about Breck and Brecky Breck? Uh, I have a grandson. He's 19 months old and he is infatuated with tractors. And I was trying to uh, get him ready and settle down for a nap. And he wanted to see more about tractors. And I was looking online on YouTube for something for kids with tractors. And up pops this very colorful girl in, in with a big green bow. And I think you had a yellow shirt on and bright green bl glasses. But your personality, I said, she's got to be a school teacher that... I, I've got to hear her story because maybe she's a school teacher. It's a pandemic. She wanted to reach kids, something. He stood there. He wouldn't even sit. He stood there with his mouth open watching and was fascinated for the entire tour of the tractors because oh, you made it so interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your background. Did you set out to do this? Is this a side hustle? Let's talk about you. Where did you come from and what's your background? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have four kids and, um, well, they're, they're now nine, eight, almost seven and four years old. But oh at the my. time we started the channel, my littlest girl was just born. So she was only like six months old. And, um, I grew up, I've been involved in like church ministries and summer camps, and I've always helped out in kids stuff. I've been an avid babysitter growing up. And I just always had a heart for kids. And so um, as my little kids were growing older, um, it was actually my oldest son who um, was interested in fire trucks. And so I typed in YouTube tour of fire trucks for kids. And um, there was one other creator that came up and it was super entertaining. But I'll, there was some things I'm like, man, I feel like I could as a mom, I see some things that I would do differently, some things that I would love to add. And, um, and I kind of just left that as a thought for a couple of years. And then finally, um, my husband, I kept saying, Oh, I just wish there'd be more content out there for kids, like real life stuff that can be entertaining and engaging. And my husband's like, well, then why don't you do it? And I was like, okay. And so that's how we started. We just kind of chose, he asked me what my favorite colors were. And I said, green and yellow, not necessarily together. Um, yellow is my all time favorite color, but, um, so yeah, he was like, all right, let's go with that. And so we just came up with it. And um, yeah, we've been inspired by a lot, lot of other YouTube creators. But um, as a mom, I just feel like I have such a heart and I know how to engage and interact with children. So I felt like I had a lot of value to add to the YouTube scene. And YouTube is kind of a you know, it's an unknown place for kids in a lot of areas and parents. And so it's really important to have good quality content um, online for kids. And I just wanted to add that and kind of be a light um, in that arena. So that's how it got started. 
and I am loving it. We're three and a half years in now. And um, it's just been such a fun experience. I mean, so my husband is the videographer, so he is there with me. And so we get to go on like dates. And then a lot of times we'll come back with our kids and visit all of the places that we visit. Cause you know, they're like, what? You got to do that? <laughs> like, yes. how did you get to ride in a hot air balloon or you do these things? And I'm just like, okay, like we'll come back and revisit it. So it's just super fun and I love it. Well, it's great. You've got a great personality. So I wasn't sure if you were showing up in uh, in your street oh, clothes yeah. or in your, in your gear today. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wore the bright pink. I thought I'm not going to be in a business suit for this interview. No way. Oh, I love we're it. Talking yeah. kids. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, you're definitely very engaging with with children. I've seen this firsthand. So uh, before this interview this morning, I'm with my grandson today, and we watched the uh, the cow video of the oh, creamery. Yeah. yeah, and I thought, okay. Have you done one where you will you go in and, and show them how ice cream is made? Because this is his new discovery is ice cream. Yes, we do. And it's one okay. of our fave episodes. So, yeah, we went okay. to Renaissance ice cream and we mix milk and everything. And then um, the creator, he like makes this like teddy bear, like Uncle Teddy. I don't know if you've seen him in the show yet. Mm -mm. We have a little um, a stuffed animal that I got at Costco that we incorporated into the show on the first episode or one of the first episodes. And then it was like a hit. So we had to keep them in there. So one of those giant teddy bears from Costco, we call him Uncle Teddy, because I called him that on the fly out of just on a whim. And a lot of times I'm not scripted at all. So we just kind of roll with it. And um, so I'll say stuff that I'm like, Oh, okay, like, you know, and, and Kylan, you know, will cut stuff, but it's just a lot of fun. So yeah, there's a really awesome ice cream episode. And the creator made a teddy bear out of the ice cream and I get to eat this giant teddy bear of ice cream. And I don't eat the whole thing off the camera. <laughs> it looks like I do, but I really don't. Very cute. Well, well I'll yeah. have to go show him that episode. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about this. So was this a big leap of faith? Did What was your end game for this? Did you think I just want to provide content or were you, did you have a business model you were going after? Um, you know, we really didn't. I, um, I, my heart, my passion are for kids. And so I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, I, I just felt like if it goes somewhere amazing, but I just want to, it's like, I, as a child, I idolized, you know, Cinderella. And I always thought she's so humble and she's, you know, scrubbing the floor and her sisters are so mean to her. And I was like, man, these are like, you know, characters that you don't get to meet. How about creating a character that kids can look up to and and I um I used to be a huge fan of this Canadian show called The Big Comfy Couch and she's this girl dressed as a clown kind of she just got a she's dressed as a doll and she has a doll and she does these stretches around the clock and then she cleans up her 10 second tidy and she stuffs everything under her couch but her personality in the show is just so warm and inviting and welcoming and comforting and I was like wow and I as an adult have looked at what is she up to nowadays and come to find out she's a mom and like, she's going on with her life. But I was just like, Oh my gosh, like I love that. Um, I felt so connected to her and like inspired by her and comforted. And, um, and as a parent, I want, I wanted to create something that was, um, you know, something that's super engaging where it's informative and where when you go out in your everyday life, you can see something. Like, oh, I know a little bit about that, you know, and it's fun because it's not just, you know, a cartoon that you're watching and there's no, you know, depth to it. So that's kind of like, but I didn't really have a business plan. My husband is all of our, um, he's very, he's in the marketing world. So he does all of our marketing and he's my editor and videographer. And, um, so being married to him at such a young age has been an incredible blessing because every time that I've had a dream or a vision, he's helped me bring it to life. So, um, but as far as a long-term plan, um, you know, I've, I've like thought about how I would love to do like a live, I've done a few live story times and craft mm -hmm. dance stuff. And it's so fun. I've gone to birthday parties and it's just like, that is the part that just brings me joy. Cause I get to interact with those kids and they're so excited and they're telling me all about their day. And it's just such a huge blessing. So um, I've kind of been taking it just one step at a time and just kind of like, and I have to continue to ask myself, what is 
um, you know, where am I content? You know, where's, what's my contentment line? And, and am I going to be happy if this is the, if we never grew, you know, and this is where we're at right now forever, is that okay? And at what point am I going to phase out of this healthily? And, um, and so I just have to, that's something that I emotionally just have to do. Um, you know, so as far as like the business strategy, we just continue to have like every three months, we'll just kind of regroup my husband and I, and talk about what's our plan, you know, how do we want to, and we haven't, um, we know that we could push it, you know, a lot harder than we have been, but I think we've just been taking it easy because first of all, I have four kids and I've been like, I don't want to burn out and get overwhelmed. So, um, yeah, I feel like we've just been kind of like taking it one step at a time, realizing it is making a difference. And, um, and, you know, I just, I absolutely love it. And it's a creative outlet for me as a mom. Like that's a, that's a huge component to it too. <laughs> well, you're definitely a natural. You're definitely, definitely very engaging. I've turned on a lot of the cartoons and, um, you know, I'm looking at them now thinking they're entertaining. My grandson really doesn't get thrilled about the cartoons yet. He's too little, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of violence in the cartoons. Like they, yeah, they teach, yeah. they teach you know, kids do bad things to other kids in the cartoons from such a young age. I thought, why do they need to see that right now? I know they're going to grow up and and they're, yeah. they're going to learn about things like that, but why do they need to see that even before yeah. they're two? So right, right. Um, we limit the TV. So it's good yeah. to find something good and healthy yes. and safe on YouTube. Oh, for though, sure. Right? And, and that was, that was a huge thing for me. Cause as a mom, I was like, I want to take a break and go get the dishes done, but yes. I want to make sure that what they're watching is safe and wholesome. And, um, and I've been trying to figure out how to incorporate those emotional, those, you know, those arguments or those, um, combative behaviors that we run into. It's like, how do I like, even as Brecky Breck, how do I help like encourage and foster communication and emotional health? And so I've been really adamant about including other people in my episodes mm. by talking to adults asking questions. And then I've done a couple episodes with, um, like I played, I was a tea party episode and I had like a dump truck run into the blocks and knock them over. And it's all just me playing with toys. And then I'm like, Oh, I wasn't ready for my tower to be knocked over yet. Mr. Dump truck. Like, can you, you know, and he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I got really excited. And, you know, I try to like process and talk through the emotional elements of that, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what else can I do that will like, you know, encourage that in kids. Cause I do, I totally agree with you. I think that's a huge, um, it's super important to just have good content where it's like, Hey, this is emotionally healthy and fueling and, um, and I can rely on it. So. So what was it like when you started seeing the numbers go up? Because I took a look at, uh, several of your videos and your views on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know who Brecky Breck is, I'm going to give you a big plug right now because she doesn't just have five or 10 or 20 uh, neighbors that are viewing her. She's got 8.2 million, 9.2 million views and so on and so forth on her episodes. So it's not a little thing. So are you going to monetize this? Are you monetizing this? Do you want to have a big show coming up? Do you have anything you want to announce today? I don't, I don't have anything I want to announce. We've literally, um, it's been, like I said, such a slow growth process. And it's interesting because the YouTube, so, so to be monetized on YouTube, you have to have 1000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. We hit the 4,000 watch hours within the first three months, which was incredible, Huge, but we could not get that subscriber base for like the longest time. I felt like it took forever. And, you know, and that's the other part of YouTube is like, if you are setting out to accomplish a goal, you know, you have to be passionate about the thing that you're setting out to do, regardless of the outcome, because if you focus completely on the success at the end of the road, you're going to burn out before you even get there. And so that's huge. And I was like, I am so passionate about this regardless of what happens, like I'm going to keep doing it. And so that's where we're at. But as far as like, it's weird because with the algorithm on YouTube, you know, you just get one video that'll start to take off. And as that's going, it'll start to draw people in. So like our fire truck episode took off and then it slowly started to gain more and more traction. And, um, 
And I'm, you know, I am not that active on social media as much as I could be. And that's something that my husband and I kind of argue about because he's like, come on, like we could be. And I'm like, I right. have like a capacity here I'm trying to help <laughs> my kids. And um, but it is fun to get messages from people. We've got I've gotten a message. Um, oh, it was from the Philippines. And they go, they said, you're the pale redhead over here, the English speaking pale redhead. And it's fun because they get to see real life things in the United States that happen. And it's just really awesome. So um, it's just been such a pleasure to like, just continue to create this. But yeah, as far as it taking off, like we are monetized now. Um, but the majority of our content is viewed on the YouTube kids app. And that is not monetized. So yeah. We actually don't make as much as Social Blade or other um, sources might tell you that we make. So that's something that I'm trying to figure out in order to continue producing this content. You know, we need to figure out a plan, whether that's Patreon and just getting intentional. We have we sell merch, but nobody really knows that because I never plug it. I And that's the other part. I have such a hard time with ads and I would love to be able to take off the ads because, again, as a parent, I'm not sure that I support that 100%. You know, you get these random ads before and after and during your videos. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what those are going to be. And I don't know that I stand behind them. So, um, yeah, I'm just still just trying to process and figure out how do we do this and how do I. It's hard to ask for help, too, because I'm like, oh, I got it. We'll take care of it. We got it figured out. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I'm getting to the point where I am going to need to ask something yes. of my audience. And whether that's like, can you donate a dollar a month to help us continue doing this? Like, you know, that's something that I need to wrestle with and figure out. And I think the other part of that is when I invite people to the table to help me, I, it definitely adds more weight to my shoulders of like, well, now I need to make sure that I'm producing, you know, everything that they want and that's a whole nother ball game in itself. Cause up to this point, it's been all on my, you know, I can do it on yep. my own time. And we do skip posting. Sometimes we don't post every week, like we said we would because life happens and we yes. get overwhelmed and there's so much. So yeah, it's just been kind of like, ah, but I, I, like I said, I just had these milestone markers in my, in the last three and a half years where I have questioned, am I doing like, should I be doing this? Is this the right thing to do? And then I'll get confirmation, you know, like my godmother who I hadn't talked to in years calls me out of nowhere. And she's like 65 years old. And she says, Hey, this is like six months, right? When we started. Right. And I was just like, I don't know if I should be doing this. Like, and she called me and she goes, Hey, I just was like having this thought about you last night. And I feel like you're pursuing something creative and it's what you're supposed to do, but you've been doubting it. So do you mind telling me like, what is this thing? And I was like, it's YouTube. And she's like, what? And it was great. I was like, and that was confirmation in my heart of like, okay, like, yes, this is what I'm supposed to do. And, and as I keep checking in, I keep getting confirmation. Like I'm going to stay on this path and I love it. And um, yeah, I think it, it's growing really fast. We currently have a video that is the fastest growing video we've ever had the last one we we uploaded. So I'm just watching that like, okay, like, wow, this is crazy. And we'll see where it takes us. But you know, I'm just super excited and along for the ride. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you yeah. are a great example of someone who is following the reason why, mm -hmm. and you're doing it for all of the earnest and the right uh, reasons, mm -hmm. but there is no problem uh, because I reached out to you because I'm saying, thank you very much. It's great content in, yeah. and it's safe and it's informative. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm reaching out to you saying, here's confirmation that um, it wasn't in my wheelhouse except for my grandson. And I'm sharing it with other people saying this is safe content and they, they love it and they're learning something and it's brand new. So I don't think anybody would have a problem supporting you, whether it's buying merchandise or supporting you in a subscription or anything like that, if they want more of that good safe content, because there yeah. isn't a lot out there mm -hmm. um, that's not full of junk. So thank you for providing yeah. that personally. Thank you for well, providing Well, thank you that. for the confirmation. I <laughs> truly appreciate that. I mean, it has been, I'm just like, again, I'm not that... My friends are like, Brick, you need to ask for help at your home. Yes. At your, you know, and I'm like, oh, you know, because I just try to carry it all. And I'm realizing, you know what? I cannot. It takes it takes a village. And um, and I need to accept that. And and honestly, like I I do have these realizations where 
you know, people will message me on Facebook or Instagram thinking that I'm like super busy. I have no time. And I'm like, I'm just a stay at home mom that like films. <laughs> we try to film a lot of our content all together up front and then we'll have it like just come yes. through the three months. So it's actually been a little while since I've filmed, unless I hear of super something super exciting happening and I'm like, oh, we got to film it. Like, let's right. grab our stuff and get over right. there. But um, yeah, for the most part, I'm realizing when people message me and I respond on social yes. media, they're like, oh, wow, like she's talking to me. And I'm like, oh, I <laughs> okay. Like, I guess I can like, you know, I I can, I have these friends, you know, this audience that is like thankful, like you said, and they're willing to help if I'm just yes. willing to ask. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm like, okay, I need to ask. And that's a whole nother ticket to success is like, it does take a village. And to get to that first thousand subscribers, it was like, I was asking my family and friends, please share this, help us, you know, and you know, some of my friends are like, what are you doing? This is crazy. And a lot of them are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love it 100%. And it just, and now I'm like, wow, without those first, that foundation, you know, I would not be where I am. And I'm just forever grateful. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So I have a few subscribers. So let's help you out here. Uh, everybody knows a toddler. Everybody knows uh, a young child that, that needs some entertainment at some point, some good, valuable entertainment. Where can people find you? Yeah, you can just search Brecky Breck on YouTube. Um, and if you just subscribe, that would be awesome. You can also find me on Instagram um, and Facebook. And I was on TikTok, but I'm taking a break from that. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's so hard. So yeah, Brecky Breck, B R E C K Y, B R E C K. And um, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I truly appreciate the love and support. Okay. Everybody needs to go find and share with your friends and subscribe because we want her to continue. Um, on behalf of all of the children that are out there that are totally engaged. So what's your favorite episode to date? Yeah, so I really, I mean, I have a couple favorites for different reasons, but um, camping was my all-time favorite thing. Like it truly okay. is. I used to make my parents take me camping every year for my birthday. It's in September. And I was just, so, so filming the camping episode was a ton of fun. And I had these ideas to get, um, uh, this pizza costume and a hot dog costume. And I was going to like change into my jammies and then like jump behind a tree and jump out. And I was turning into a hot, like, these aren't my jammies, jump behind, jump out. Oh, this is, no, this is not my jammies. And I just like, it was so fun to film that whole camping episode. Um, and it was really fun too, because my dad actually was watching our children at the campground while we were filming it. So I was like, okay, you guys go play over there. Like, while well, we filmed this little, and it was so fun, but, um, and just prepping all of that, you know, getting all the camping gear out and laying it out on the lawn. My husband's like, wow, you're really into this. And I was just like, I just love camping. And I want to encourage little kids to get outside and explore. And um, so that was a super fun episode. And another fun episode was um, our fire station in Sun River, Oregon. It was the day after Thanksgiving. It started to snow. There was no one around. They they invited me to come tour. And then while I was there filming, they had a couple guys in the kitchen making a giant breakfast for all the firefighters. Mm -hmm. And so by the time, right when we were done, they were done with breakfast and they did their little breakfast call and brought all the firefighters in. And they were like, oh, stay for breakfast. And we were like, what? Like, no. And they're like, no, seriously. So we joined them for breakfast and it was so special to sit at the table with a bunch of firefighters and just like the quiet, calm, snowy day, day after Thanksgiving. And then they sent us home with a bunch of awesome little toys and fun stuff for our kids because they were at an Airbnb just a couple like blocks down the road. So that was a super fun episode. And I, I think the biggest thing for me with filming is like I absolutely love getting to know people people and their passions. And so as I get to film, you know, how newspapers mm. are made, I'm filming with this like 70 year old man who's been doing this for 45 years. And he's finally got someone in there that's like excited and like, tell me how you do it. Like, tell me how this big machine. And it was just like, he lit up, I lit up. And it was just like, oh man, the energy in the room. And I felt like that was such a monumental day for him. And it was a monumental day for me because I had this deep appreciation for what he does and what he's been doing for the last 45 years of his life. And all these episodes that I've been doing, I just love it. That's the big thing too, is like, let's get inside their head 
And you, when you do that and you invite little kids to the table, they might find their next passion too by watching. Oh, I, I want to get into that. I want to, you know, meet people like that. And that's the, even like coffee, the coffee episode. I'm not actually a coffee drinker, but when I filmed with them, like how into it they were about the roasting process and picking the beans and all this. And it was just so intricate. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is incredible. Like you guys are really, really, they're good at their craft. And I want mm -hmm. to share that so much. So I just, I mean, it's like every episode is my favorite because I just love the interaction and the engagement that I get. And then the street sweeper, a gentleman that we filmed with, he was like, did not know what to expect. He was like, saw, he saw one episode. He's like, I barely watched it. And I turned it off because it made me uncomfortable. And he's like, he, but he didn't really want to have anything to do with it. And I show up on scene and I'm like talking to him normal. Like I was like, Hey, right. so this is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And he was like, okay, okay. And then we do it. And it only took us 30 minutes to film. Cause he's like right. in less than that. And then we finished the episode within the next two days, post it. And then he, I shit, I send it to him and he sends it to his grandkids and he watches it and he goes, that was incredible. Like, I don't know why I ever doubted you, but it was like so fun to like get to That's know so him. Funny. Like, who kind of started as a grouchy man was like, oh, this is actually really exciting. And you're showing something that again, I do every day and I never get recognized for it and I never get to, you know, share it. So it was really fun to like, hey, let's like, and that's the other part. I'm just so jazzed right now because I'm like, I love that as an adult, we grow up and we lose our excitement for things that are exciting. And it's like, how do we stay vulnerable in our joy? And like these big tractors, these are very cool. But when an adult goes to look at a big tractor, you're not like, oh, wow, look at that engine. Oh, I want to dance around it. You know, but as it's like as a creator, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. And it gives me the rite of passage to be excited and have that childlike mentality because that's how I'm feeling. And I actually get to show it. So it, it's just so much fun. And I again, I. I could talk about it all day long. <laughs> well, it's very clear that uh, you have a blast doing it and you can't fake it. I mean, you definitely are naturally excited. So it gets the audience and the kids very excited about what's going on. What do your children think of your show? They love it. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Greta, my littlest. Um, so she's four now and she is my biggest fan. She absolutely loves it. All my kids love it and they'll watch it. It's funny because my oldest, he'll watch it. You know, he's pretty cool. And so he'll watch it, but he'll, he'll be like, oh, mom, you should have said this or you should have, he'll kind of critique it. I'm like, stop, like, <laughs> I can't change it now. My but it's so great because they just, they're super supportive and there have been um, really cool opportunities where a mom reached out to me. Her son was in the ER on his birthday mm -hmm. and um, she was like, do you think you could send us a video message to wish him a happy birthday? And, and when I got the message, I, I checked her out on Facebook and I realized that she lived in Moses Lake, Washington, which was really close to my parents' house. And I was like in town. And so I was oh. like, can I come say hi? And oh. so I got a gift together and got to actually drop it off and say hi. And it was incredible because my kids, when I share that, they were like emotional. Like my son was like mm. moved to tears, like, mom, this is incredible. Like you have to go, you have to go wish him a happy birthday and be with him. And um, he's got a lot of uh, problems that have been going on this little boy. And so it was such an incredible opportunity to love on him in that capacity. And the fact that my kids get to see that and be a part of that and encourage that they're huge fans of it. And we'll go out in public. And if a little kid or they'll say, my mom's Bricky Brick. Like, you know, we're at a park. He's like, mom, talk like Bricky Brick. Come on, talk like Bricky Brick. Oh, that's so like, funny. Oh, so it's, it's really cool because I, I love the support that they share. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to Brecky Brick. I know you know a child out there that can use some good, clean fun. Yes, awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning into the Mentors and Moguls podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, rate and review this interview and share it with a friend who could benefit from today's guest. You can find bonus video episodes at mentorsandmogulspodcast.com or check out our events page and our blog at heatherrstone.com. Until next time, make it a great day. Thank you.